experience the power of faith. Jesus, a beacon of hope, love, and forgiveness. His teachings timeless, his impact immeasurable. Uncover the story of Jesus, a journey unlike any other. Have you ever wondered about the deeper meaning behind the act of communion in Christianity? This seemingly simple act of sharing bread and wine holds a profound spiritual significance that extends far beyond the ritualistic ceremony. Let's take a step back and consider the story of the Last Supper, a pivotal moment in Christian history. Jesus, surrounded by his disciples, took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and shared it among them, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. He then took a cup of wine, offered a prayer of gratitude, and passed it around, declaring, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. But what did Jesus mean by these words? Why bread and wine? What was he trying to convey? These are questions that have stirred the hearts and minds of spiritual seekers for centuries. In the realm of esoteric teachings, bread represents the flesh of Christ, an outer form of the inner substance, while wine is the expressed life of the vine, symbolically, the very blood of life. When Jesus offered the bread and wine to his disciples, he was presenting them with symbols of spiritual nourishment and life. This act of partaking in communion is essentially an act of appropriating substance and life. When we consume the bread, we are symbolically partaking in the spiritual flesh of Christ, embodying life itself. Similarly, when we drink the wine, we are symbolically drinking the lifeblood of the divine vine, satisfying our spiritual thirst. But it's even deeper than that. According to esoteric teachings, the body of Jesus Christ is spiritual flesh, substance fashioned into beauty and permanency by the Word of God. The blood of Jesus Christ is the quickening element in creation, it perpetuates to eternal expression all who are able to drink of it. As we delve deeper into this topic, let's journey back to the time of the Last Supper, a time that marked the beginning of a tradition that would carry on for centuries, a tradition embedded with profound spiritual significance. Imagine a room filled with tension and anticipation where Jesus and his disciples gather for what would be their final meal together. As they sat down to share this meal, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and offered it to his disciples with the words, Take and eat, this is my body. In this moment, Jesus established a profound symbol, one that would echo through centuries to come. The bread, simple and humble, represented his own body, given for the world. But it was more than just a symbol of his impending sacrifice. It was also an invitation for his followers to partake in his divine life, to ingest and embody the spiritual sustenance he offered. Then Jesus took a cup of wine, gave thanks again, and passed it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The wine, rich and red, symbolized his very life essence, his blood poured out for humanity. It represented the divine life force, the life of the vine, the blood of life. Just like the bread, it was more than a symbol. It was a call to partake, to imbibe the divine essence he was offering. These two elements, bread and wine, would become central to the Christian practice of communion. They were not chosen randomly. Bread, a staple of life, symbolized sustenance, while wine, often associated with joy and celebration, symbolized life itself. Together they presented a powerful image of spiritual nourishment and life, offered freely by Jesus to his followers. The Last Supper, therefore, was not just a farewell meal. It was a profound spiritual act, a powerful symbolism that transcended the physical elements of bread and wine. It was Jesus' way of demonstrating the deepest truth of the gospel, that in partaking of his body and blood, symbolized by the bread and wine, his followers were spiritually partaking of his life and substance. This act, simple yet profound, marked the beginning of a spiritual practice that would continue for centuries. Bread and wine, more than just food and drink, in the context of the Last Supper, they hold a deeper spiritual meaning. Allow me to unfold this for you. Bread, as simple as it may seem, carries profound symbolism. It represents the flesh of Christ, embodying the very substance of life. Just as bread nourishes our bodies, the spiritual flesh of Christ nourishes our souls. This is the beauty of symbolism. The mundane transformed into the divine, the ordinary into the extraordinary. Bread is an outer form of the inner substance. In the words of Jesus, I am the living bread which came down out of heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. This living bread is life itself. When we partake of it, we assimilate life, embody life, and become part of the eternal. Now let's move on to wine. In esoteric teachings, the vine is considered a symbol of life principle. 
Wine, therefore, is the expressed life of the vine, symbolically representing the very blood of life. It's not just a drink, but a symbol of life's vitality, the lifeblood of creation. The blood of Jesus Christ is this quickening element, a force that perpetuates eternal expression for all who are able to drink of it. My blood is drink indeed, Jesus said, teaching us that whoever drinks the blood of the life vine ceases to thirst. Their cravings are satisfied in righteousness, their thirst for sin quenched. When we partake in communion, we are essentially partaking in the life and substance of Jesus Christ. We are translating the invisible elements of God into the Lord's body, bringing it from the invisible to the visible side of life. We are not just eating bread and drinking wine, but spiritually consuming the body and blood of Christ, embracing the divine life and substance he offers. This, my friends, is the magnificence of the bread and wine symbolism. It's not just a ritual, but a spiritual banquet, a divine communion that we are all invited to partake in. Communion, a spiritual banquet inviting us all to partake in the life and substance of Christ. This act, which may seem simple in its execution, carries profound spiritual implications. It is about affirming spiritual substance and life, a ritual that is more than just a symbolic reenactment. When we partake in communion, we are not just consuming bread and wine, we are spiritually ingesting the life and substance of Christ. The bread, representing the flesh of Christ, is an outer form of inner substance while the wine, the expressed life of the vine, symbolizes the very blood of life. In this act of communion, we are participating in a powerful spiritual process. We are translating the invisible elements of God into something visible, something tangible. It's a transformative act that transcends the physical and enters the spiritual realm. It's a spiritual assimilation, a conscious choice to embody the life that Christ offers. This spiritual banquet is not a solitary feast. It's a shared experience, a communal act that binds us together in spiritual unity. As we partake in the bread and wine, we are not only affirming our spiritual substance in life, but we are also affirming our shared connection with one another and with Christ. In communion, we are reminded of the omnipresence of God. The God elements invisible are the substance of our invisible body, feeding and sustaining our visible body in their formed state. The act of communion, then, is an affirmation of our faith in this spiritual substance and life. Communion is a profound act of spiritual acceptance, an invitation to partake in the divine life of Christ. It's an act of appropriation, of consciously choosing to embody the life and substance of Christ. It's about translating the invisible into the visible, about affirming our spiritual substance and life. Just as Jesus invited his disciples to partake in the bread and wine, we too are invited to partake in this divine communion. It's an invitation to experience the divine, to transcend the physical and enter the spiritual realm. In communion, we are invited to partake in the life and substance of Christ, to affirm our spiritual substance and life. Let us break the bread of life To give us life To prove His love for us God sacrificed His only Son for our salvation Yes, we believe that we have been set free And now as we kneel before the cross of our Redeemer Let us break the bread of life Together take the cup of salvation Let us break the 
God of goodness, I come into your presence so aware of my human frailty and yet overwhelmed by your love for me. I thank you that there is no human experience that I might walk through where your love cannot reach me. If I climb the highest mountain, you are there, and yet if I find myself in the darkest valley of my life, you are there. Teach me today to love you more. Help me to rest in that love that asks nothing more than the simple trusting heart of a child. Amen. Among the disciples there was one who stood out, Judas. A figure often shrouded in a cloud of infamy, Judas Iscariot to many, is synonymous with betrayal. However, in the grand tapestry of spiritual understanding, Judas represents something more profound. He symbolizes a human faculty that we all possess, acquisitiveness. Acquisitiveness, while often seen in a negative light, is inherently not bad. It is a fundamental aspect of our human nature our desire to possess, to claim, to make something ours. However, when left unchecked, it can lead us down a path of suffering as it did for Judas. His desire to possess led him to betray the one he followed, resulting in one of the most infamous acts of treachery known to mankind. But in this story of betrayal and despair, there is a lesson to be learned. Judas is not merely a symbol of greed and betrayal, but a reminder of a faculty we all possess that, when elevated to spiritual expression, can bring about transformation. Judas was not an anomaly among the disciples. He was one of them, carrying a piece of the human condition that we all share. Our task is not to eliminate this Judas within us, but instead, to lift it to a higher plane of existence. This requires letting go of the idea that we can personally possess even the life and substance of our organisms. Life and substance are universal, not personal possessions. They belong to everyone and everything and are not ours to hoard or withhold. This is where the path of Judas diverges from the path we are called to walk. Instead of clinging to what we believe is ours, we are invited to renounce personal possession and embrace the universal. In doing so, we can find a new relationship with life, one that is not confined by the limitations of personal possession, but is instead expanded by the limitless possibilities of the universal. Through the story of Judas, we learn the importance of renouncing personal possession and embracing the universal. This is the transformative power of the tale of Judas, a power that invites us to step beyond our personal desires and step into a realm of universal connection and communion. God's invitation to us is clear. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
This divine call beckons us to participate in a spiritual banquet, a communion that transcends the physical realm and takes us into the sphere of the divine. Each of us is invited to partake in this communion, an act that symbolizes the affirmation of spiritual substance and life. Just as bread and wine are transformed into nourishment for our physical bodies, our spiritual selves are nourished and transformed through the act of divine communion. This is not a mere ritual, it is an act of profound significance. When we take the bread, symbolic of this flesh of this divine, vine and the wine representing the life essence we are engaging in a spiritual dialogue that transcends the limitations of human language we are acknowledging our interconnectedness with the divine and affirming our faith in the omnipresent elements of god's being as we partake in this communion we are not merely consuming bread and wine we are consuming life and embodying life and through this act we are quenching our thirst for spiritual fulfillment this communion feeds our spiritual selves sustaining us in a way that physical food cannot when we partake in communion we are proclaiming the truth that is at the very heart of our faith that the divine is within us around us and part of us we are affirming our belief in the omnipresence of god and expressing our commitment to live our lives in alignment with this spiritual truth. This divine banquet is an open invitation extended to all who are willing to open their hearts and minds to the divine. It is an invitation to experience the joys of divine communion, to partake in the spiritual sustenance that is offered, and to affirm our place in the spiritual realm. Through communion, we're given the opportunity to assimilate life, embody life, and quench our thirst in righteousness. As we conclude our exploration of the deeper meaning behind communion, let's revisit the key teachings. We've journeyed through the Last Supper, unearthing the symbolism of bread and wine. The bread is the outer form of inner substance. The wine is the expressed life of the vine symbolizing the very blood of life. We've learned about the act of communion, an affirmation of spiritual substance and life, and the role of Judas, a representation of our human acquisitiveness, a faculty we must lift to spiritual expression. We've been invited to partake in the Divine Communion, a spiritual banquet where God Himself is our companion. This journey has shown us that through the act of communion, we translate the invisible elements of God into the visible, bringing the Lord's body from the invisible to the visible side of life. May we all strive to partake in this divine communion, affirming spiritual substance and life, and quenching our thirst in righteousness. Before we close this exploration, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we humbly come before you, seeking spiritual nourishment and understanding, we ask you to fill us with your divine wisdom as we partake in the act of communion. May the bread and wine not just fill our physical bodies but also nourish our spirits, giving us a deeper understanding of your love and sacrifice. We pray for unity, that as we partake in this shared experience, we may feel a bond not just with those in our immediate community, but with all who partake in this act worldwide. May we remember that we are all one in the body of Christ, sharing in his sacrifice. And finally we ask for strength, strength to elevate our human nature to a higher spiritual plane, to overcome our own Judas within, and strive towards righteousness. Like the bread and wine, may we too be transformed, becoming expressions of your divine love and sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. As we conclude our journey, may we all strive to partake in this divine communion, affirming spiritual substance in life, and quenching our thirst in righteousness. Lord God, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude. You have loved this world so deeply that you gave us your one and only Son, so that we too might be called your children. Every day, help us to live in the joy and grace that comes from knowing you. Let our hearts be filled with thankfulness for the ultimate sacrifice you made on our behalf. As we open our eyes each morning, let them look upon your grace and rejoice in the salvation we have in you. Guide our steps, Lord, so that we may walk in your mighty grace. Let us not keep this good news to ourselves, but share it with the world. May everything we do be for your glory. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. And now, dear friends, as we bask in the afterglow of this prayer, I want to encourage you to keep the flame of faith burning. How can you do that? By staying connected with us here. We constantly strive to bring you words of spiritual nourishment and encouragement. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. But don't stop there. Click on the bell icon and select all notifications. This ensures that you won't miss out on any of our sermons. We share a new sermon every Sunday, a fresh word from God to start your week off right. It's a wonderful way to keep your spiritual life vibrant and growing. And remember, when you subscribe and click the bell, you're not just benefiting yourself. You're also helping to spread God's word to others. But this isn't just about passively receiving. We invite you to be an active participant in this spiritual journey engage with our content, 
Share your thoughts and reflections in the comments. Pass the videos along to friends and loved ones who might need a word of encouragement. And if you've appreciated this sermon, go ahead and hit that like button. It's a simple act, but it can make a big difference. It helps our content reach more people and it lets us know that our work is resonating with you. Your support means the world to us. It's what keeps us going and it's what enables us to continue bringing the life-changing message of God's word to you and to the world. Remember, God's word is a treasure chest of spiritual gems. Keep exploring, keep discovering. Until next time, stay blessed.